Hi students, Professor Gray here. We need to continue on in chapter one and talk about measurements in chemistry. And why do we do measurements? Well, so we can uh, collect data and then interpret that data and then make, um, and then do some analysis on that data and come to conclusions. But first, um, data can come in a couple of different forms. We've got qualitative and quantitative. Now, qualitative data is pretty much somebody's opinion, and it doesn't involve numbers. So if you look down here, you see that this little baby says that apple pie is yummy and mud pie is yucky. Now, another baby could come along and think mud pie is yummy and apple pie is yucky. So that's pretty much uh, just an opinion right there. So qualitative data, this is data like color or taste or smell or a yes or a no. So there's different types of qualitative data. And quantitative data is data that we obtain, obtain um, by doing measurements. So this is definitely gonna involve numbers. Now, um, if we're talking about in real life where we see qualitative versus quantitative, that might be with a pregnancy test. So a qualitative pregnancy test, that's the one that you would buy at the store and pee on and either it'll say that yes, you're pregnant or no, you're not pregnant. And so then you go to the doctor and the doctor will do another qual test to say yes or no. And the doctor will also order a quant which means uh, that he or she is going to measure how pregnant you are. And what they're looking for is human chorionic, chorionic gonadotropin, um, that hormone that's in the blood. And in the beginning of pregnancy, that um, will double um, every certain um amount of time and blah, 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 can't talk tonight it's gonna double every couple days or so and so if they watch the hcg go up um then they know it's a good strong pregnancy uh so yeah that's gonna give us some numbers because we're gonna have um a concentration of hcg in the blood now how do we report our measurements well in this country, we tend to use the U.S. customary system unless we're doing science, and then we use the metric system. And the U.S. customary system is also called the American system, and sometimes it's called the English system, and sometimes it's called the imperial system because we got our system from the English. Now, the weird thing about this is that... The American system and the English system share units like inches, gallons, pounds, teaspoons, fluid ounces, but some of those uh, are different, and you'll see that on the next slide. So if we're taking a look at the U.S. customary system and we take a look at Mr. Gallon right here, we can see that in a gallon, we've got four quarts. And in each quart, we've got two pints. So a gallon has eight pints, and in each pint, we've got two cups. So that's a whole lot of cups in a gallon, but it's not like a five or a 10 or a 20 or a 100, something that would make a little more sense. We've got twos and fours and eights and 16s going on there. So it's kind of hard to guess with those. Um, so yeah, the US customary system has some weird anomalies in it. Now, back to what I was talking about when I said that the US and uh, English system, they look like they're the same, but they're not always the same. And that's evident on this baby bottle right here. So if we take a look at the milk, what it'll show you 
is on this side, UK fluid ounces, and on this side, US fluid ounces. And the milk is sitting at about seven UK fluid ounces, but you can see that it's a little under the mark for seven US fluid ounces. So fluid ounces um, in the UK and the US are a little bit different, even though they're called the exact same thing. Whereas the metric system, which is over here on this side, and we're doing our measurement in milliliter, is the same all over the world. So if you have 200 milliliters in France, you're going to have 200 milliliters in Kazakhstan. Same 200 milliliters. All right, so where did the met metric system come from? Well, it ideas of the metric system came from a whole lot of places, but um, it, it is famous for being adopted in France around uh, the revolution, around the 1790s. And this was an international decimalized system of measurement, so deci meaning 10. And this is where we get our units like meter, gram, and liter. And most of us have seen a meter stick. It looks a whole lot like a yardstick. And nowadays they have the meter stick on one side and you turn it over and it does the yardstick on the other side. So it measures it in inches on um, the imperial side and centimeters and millimeters on the metric side. And then along came a group of people who had a lot of time on their hands and they said, yay! let's uh, go ahead and standardize the metric system a little bit more and tweak it a little bit more. And this was the Système International or the International System of Units. And this is where we get the SI system. So the metric system and the SI system are pretty much the same thing, except there's a few little quirks in um, the SI system um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So don't worry too much about the difference there. They're pretty much the same. So let's kind of um, define some terms here. So this should be a really easy part of the course, but length, that's defined as how long something is. And the SI unit for length is meter. And that's the same in the metric system. And again, the SI and the metric system, pretty much the same thing with just a few tiny little differences. And if we take a look down here at this ruler, we can see that the little marks up here, those are millimeters and 10 of them are going to make a centimeter. So the big numbers down here those are centimeters. And then below we have inches. And inches are divided into eighths. Or we can divide them into sixteenths. So you guys can see that we've got one eighths down here. So you have one inch down here, and then you have one and one eighth, one and two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, and four eighths is equal to a half. So you have one and a half inches. 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and 8 eighths, and 8 over 8, anything over itself is 1, so it's saying we're at the next inch there. And so you're doing fractions when you're doing the U.S. customary system, and we're kind of used to that, but who really likes fractions? Not me. So it's a little bit easier when you just have 10 millimeters in every centimeter, you're not doing eighths or sixteenths or anything like that. You're just doing tens. All right, so mass. Mass is the amount of stuff in an object. And the SI unit uh, for mass is kilogram. Whereas in the old metric system, the unit for mass is just gram which is a G. And we use both gram and kilogram in both of those systems. So like I said, they're pretty much exactly the same except for some weird 
little quirks like in the SI system, the base unit for uh, mass is kilogram and in metric it's gram. Makes more sense to be gram for me, but whatever. Okay, and the way we measure mass in the chemistry lab is on a balance. So this is a fancy schmancy balance right here. And it's got these little glass windows. And if you grab the little handle right there, you can slide this glass door back like that. And then you can put your chemical on the pan there. You're going to put a weighing boat between the chemical and the pan or a weighing paper between them. You're not going to put it directly on the pan. And you're going to get the mass right there on the readout. Now, those glass doors, that's uh, to keep the air in the room that's circulating around from causing the mass to fluctuate there. Now, you might have a professor that gets really, really particular about the difference between mass and weight. So the mass is the amount of stuff in an object, and the weight is technically the mass times the pull of gravity. So notice how this guy has a mass of 120 kilograms on Earth, and he still has a mass of 120 kilograms if he's on the moon, but his weight on Earth is 1,200 newtons. Don't worry about what a newton is. If you take physics, you'll do newtons. But his weight on the moon is only 200 newtons, and that's because weight is equal to the mass times the pull of gravity. So you got a little bit of a difference there. So sometimes you'll get um, an instructor that's like, you must say mass and not say weight. But most of us don't go to the moon or other planets, so the pull of gravity isn't changing. So pretty much our weight is the same as our mass because the pull of gravity doesn't change. Okay. So, moving on to volume. So, volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Um, after a quarantine, I can tell you that my volume is a whole lot larger than my volume before quarantine. Um, yeah, lots of baking and eating potato chips for me. All right, so the SI unit is the cubic meter, so that would be a meter times a meter times a meter so we've got a meter cubed so one meter times one meter times one meter gives us one times one times one which is one and then meter times meter times meter is meter cubed because when you have the little exponents up there and if you don't see an exponent you know that the exponent's one because when we don't see a number we assume it's one okay and when you have exponents and you multiply them, um, the weird thing about that is that you add them. So you do 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. One of those weird little quirks of math. Why that is, ask your math teacher. I don't know. It just is what it is. Okay? So that is the meter cubed for SI. Now for the metric system, our base unit for volume is going to be the liter okay now here's the equivalent statement for meters cubed to liters right there now a liter is really easy to use and we will see milliliter quite often and there are a thousand milliliters in a liter and one milliliter is equal to exactly one centimeter cubed, which is exactly the same as one cubic centimeter. So you can use milliliter, centimeter cubed, and cubic centimeter interchangeably. So 2.5 centimeters cubed is equal to 2.5 milliliters is equal to 2.5 cc. It's exactly the same thing. So that's one of those ones that you guys should memorize. These right here, those should definitely be memorized by the end of chapter one. Okay, 
moving on to this slide right here. So just showing you what a leader is. This is a leader right here, and it's made up of 1,000 milliliters because you can fit 1,000 milliliters in a liter. That means that you have 1,000 centimeters cubed. And a centimeter cubed, if we draw a cube, you've got one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter, because here volume is equal to length times width times height. So you've got one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter. And that gives us one centimeter cubed right there. And you have a thousand of those centimeter cubed in here. So you have a thousand of those cubes. So this right here says you've got one centimeter on each side. So the volume of that little cube is one centimeter cubed. And that's what we just said down here. And that's what it's telling you again right there. So it's telling you one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter, the length times the width times the height. It's one centimeter cubed, which is equal to one milliliter. And if you have a thousand of these, you have what volume, you guys? One liter. What does one liter look like? There we are, right there. It looks like a, um, uh, not the big soda bottles that you buy in the store, because those are two liters, but like one that's half that size. And then a millimeter, sorry, a milliliter, where we would see that is in syringes. So you can see how it says one milliliter right there. So this whole volume right here, that would be just one milliliter. And if you had just to there, you would have... 0.2 milliliters, so just a little bit of a little portion of a milliliter right there. And then if you sucked up the liquid all the way to right here, you would have a milliliter. Okay, so the next slide, how do we measure time? Well, in both metric and in SI, the base unit for time is the second. And the symbol for second is just the S. Do not put S-E-C, just S. And the definition of time is so incredibly easy that it's hard. So way back, like 20 years ago, when I first started this job, when I first started teaching, I was trying to figure out how to make a slide to divide to um to give the definition of time and I sat there and I thought and I thought and I thought how how do you define time? And I had to look it up on dictionary.com and it said the duration of an event and I thought, "Oh my goodness, whoever made up that definition deserves a prize because like really how would you, like if someone asked you, what is time? What would you say, right? Okay, anyways, enough nutty professor talk. All right, so all this talk about the metric system and how the metric system's easier than the U.S. customary system because the metric system deals with um, tens, hundreds, and one thousands instead of kind of random numbers. Well, one of the areas where the metric system did not take off is with time. They tried, this was a French revolutionary clock, and it was used for a few years during the French Revolution, so in the 1790s. And the day is divided into 10 hours. You can see that right here. And uh, every hour, so one decimal hour has 100 decimal minutes and one decimal minute has 100 decimal seconds. 
very interesting, but obviously uh, that idea did not take off because everybody still uses the 24-hour day. So uh, the next time someone's giving you a hard time about the U.S. customary system and uh, why we don't use it and uh, how the metric system is so much easier, ask them why they don't use um, decimal time. Why they don't use uh, the decimal clock. Why they use the old uh, 24-hour clock and see what they say. Okay, so just to review a little bit, you guys, looking at uh, the SI base units and metric, um, the base units. So for uh, the metric system, the base units, um, for length, it's meter. For mass, it's gram. Volume is liter. Time is second. And the symbols for all of those are over here. For uh, the SI system, it's slightly different. Uh, mainly where you'll see that is with the kilogram instead of the gram. Um, not too many people use a meter cubed very often. Uh, most people use a liter or milliliters. The rest of them look pretty much the same. Okay, so looking at the imperial system um, and metric system equivalents or U.S. customary metric equivalents, um, one kilometer is 0.6214 miles. The other way you might see it is that six miles is equal to 10 kilometers. Okay, and then a meter, 39.37 inches, one meter is a little over one yard, a foot is 30.48 centimeters, and those are all kind of like ugh, strange things to look at. And the last one, an inch, an inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, and that's exactly. So these other ones up here are rounded, but the 2.54 centimeters to one inch ratio is exact, and that's one that you need to memorize, okay? So, uh, for every one inch, you have 2.54 centimeters, and for every 2.54 centimeters, you have one inch. You might see the ratios written like this. So there's uh, one inch per every 2.54 centimeters, or you can flip that upside down and it's still true. You have 2.54 centimeters per every one inch. Okay, so get used to writing things in different forms. So this right here is saying exactly the same thing as this and is saying exactly the same thing as that. They're all true. All right, more. So on this slide we did length and here we have mass. So a kilogram is equal to 2.205 or 2.21 pounds. This is a really good one to memorize. And one pound is equal to 454 grams. That's another one that's really good to know, just to make your homework and your quizzes and your tests go a little bit quicker. And then volume. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. That's actually metric to metric right there. Uh, but it gives you a picture of um, how the metric to metric is easy compared to some of these below. Like one liter is equal to 1.057 quarts. That one's weird. And then we have one US gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. So this is a good one to know here. Uh, so a gallon's about 3.8 liters or approximately 4 liters. So if you drive to Canada or you drive to Mexico and you're filling up your um, tank with gas, you're going to have to do a double conversion because you're going to have to figure out how many gallons you're buying because they sell their gas in liters 
and you're going to have to do a currency exchange. So what's the exchange rate on the U.S. dollar to the Canadian dollar or the U.S. dollar to the peso? And how many gallons am I buying because I'm buying liters? Ah! Don't worry, you'll be able to do that by the end of this class. Yay! Okay, so just to look at some metric to metric equivalents, um, a kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. You need to know that one. One meter is a hundred centimeters. You definitely need to know that one. A meter is a thousand millimeters. Yep, need to know that one too. A centimeter is 10 millimeters. A kilogram is a thousand grams. Yep, that one too. A gram is a thousand milligrams. Yep, that one too. A milligram is a thousand micrograms. You don't need to have that one memorized. Volume, one liter equals 10 deciliters, D-E-C-I. Uh, don't need to memorize that one. One liter is a thousand milliliters. Definitely need to know that one. A liter is a million microliters. Don't need to know that one. You guys can calculate that using a chart. And we'll see the chart in a little bit. Okay, deciliters, a thousand milliliters. Don't need to memorize that one. And one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed is equal to one cc. Definitely need to memorize that one. Now, what do you notice in this chart? All you have are ones, tens, one hundreds, one thousands, multiples of ten. There's no fours or twos or sixteens or crazy numbers. You have a bunch of tens here. So this system is based on tens and it makes it easy to go from one unit to another unit. And that brings us to this chart right here. Now, I want to start this chart in a different video because this one's going to take me a while. So I will see you in the next video. So that's it for now. Bye bye.